You know, you've just got to have the right attitude when you go in for a job interview. You can't go in there with all your bad experiences trailing behind you and your insecurities waving in the wind. You've got to go in there and impress them with your accomplishments and your confidence. But at the same time, you know, you just don't want to come across as a know-it-all. You know, I have never used this picture to get myself work. Which one? The Vietnamese boy. That one you won the Pulitzer Prize for? I'd be proud of that one, Nick. I haven't felt that kind of pride in a long time. I guess if I accepted the award, I should be able to accept the pride that goes along with it. Now that I'm not running away anymore, now that I'm going to be working out in the real world again. If, if I can get an honest job with this picture, it's going in my portfolio. Here, I want you to take a look at this. Kelly, this is very good. This, this is very good. You're no, great. Oh, that... Nick, I've never studied, but I mean, I'm, just, I'm doodling. No, no, you, know? you have a natural talent for this. No. I, I, I can't get his expression exactly right, you know, the way I remembered it. Maybe you need more time, uh, more perspective. Why don't you just put it away for a couple of days? No, I no. I need, I need to finish it today. Why today? Because um, it, it's an anniversary. Of your wedding to Joe? No. Six years ago, uh, my brother Channing was killed. And it was the day that Joe was arrested for his murder. It's a very sad anniversary. Yeah, I know, but it was also the day that he got out of prison and the day I started to live again. And you felt your life was over when he went into prison? Well, it was for five years, you know. I mean, I went on and, and did what I had to do, and but it was like I was only half there. And time had stopped and I was just waiting. I don't know. Can you understand why it's important to me? Cece? Cece? Oh my God. Help! Would somebody help, please? Some help. So, Sophia? Yes. Oh, yes, darling. Here. I'm right here, darling. Oh, let's get this terrible pain in my head. Yes, I know. Well, I want you to just hold very still. Oh, well, you hold still, and I'm going to go and get some help. Oh, right? wait, wait. I've got to tell you, you have to know. Tell me what? I could die any time. Cecil, what are you talking about? You're not going to die. Please listen to me. The doctor has told me that I have an aneurysm in my head. It, it could happen any time. No, I don't believe it. That's not true. Maybe, maybe it's right that I, I die now. The day that Channing died. Cece, don't say that. You know, I... When I gave birth to him, Sophie and then we took him away. No, 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 it's not you. You were to blame. Every year since he died, this is the hardest day. It's too hard to go on. No. No, 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 you listen to me. You are not going to die. Do you hear me? I am not going to let you die. Our son is gone, but we can't bring him back, Cece. There's nothing we can do, but we have so much to live for. We have our other beautiful children, and we have Brandon and Darling. We have each other now. We found each other. Do you know what that means? It's a miracle. That's a gift. I love you. I love you. I've never stopped loving you. Now, listen. You're not going to die. I can't leave you now. I love you so much. <laughs> do you? I've been... always loved you. Always. <laughs> I'm waiting so long to hear those words from you, Cece. Cece, I love you. Don't leave me. Don't die, Cece. Please. Mary, don't call the police. Ted only wanted to talk to Christy. He's violent. Get your hand away from that phone. Mary, just once. Once, would you look at Ted, really look at him, and tell me what you see? All right, I'll tell you what I see. I see a willful, unprincipled, violent man. It's not my brother you're describing. I am describing the man who raped my sister. And he's still got the scratch marks on his face from when she struggled. The truth will come out in court, but no harm has been done here today. No harm? Look at her. Look at the state she's in. She's got to be locked away. Mary, please. Don't touch me, leave me alone! Trembling. You really think I'd hurt you, Mary? Stay away from me. And you stay away from my sister!
Yes, connect me with Steve Bassett, please. He's in the district attorney's office. It's urgent. It's his sister calling. It's Mary. Ted? Ted, where are you going? Mason, thanks for trying, but I'm not hanging around. You're waiting to go to jail, man. Ted, don't leave. You'll only make things worse. What can be worse than going to jail for something I didn't do? Ted, come back! being an expectant mother, sitting in the sun by the pool, watching Brandon play, with Cece bringing me cool drinks of lemonade. Maybe I'll even learn to knit. Mrs. Capwell? Oh, uh, Dr. Richardson. I'm sorry the door was open. Well, I don't usually talk to myself, but I'm really beginning to believe there are two of us here now. The baby. Well, how are the both of you feeling? No complaints from either one of us, but I do miss my little boy. I don't think you'll have to miss him much longer. Your case was thoroughly reviewed at a staff meeting today. And? And on the basis of regular medical tests that you've been given, plus some favorable reports from me and the other psychiatrist. Are you saying I'm ready to be released? You freed yourself of drug dependency. There's no need for you to be an inpatient here anymore. I can go home! Today, if you like. You will have to continue as an outpatient for a while. And, and, uh, some of the withdrawal symptoms may persist for a time, um... Uh, Insomnia, some anxiety. I don't have any of that. I'm sleeping well. I'm not nervous, you can see that. I'm determined to stay strong and healthy. You are one of the most motivated patients we've ever had here. My baby has been my biggest motivation, along with my little boy, Brandon. He's going to be a happy boy to have his mommy home. I guess you'd like to call your husband now. Oh, there is someone I, I want to call. Not my husband, though. Steve, you said the next time something like this happened, you'd have him arrested. Well, you have to do that now. You have to find him and you have to put him away so that he can't get near Christy again. All right, we'll wait here for you and, and until you call. But hurry. Must have been Jack the Ripper you were sicking your brother on, not Ted Capwell. Probably got the posse rounded up already. Hello. Mason, it's Gina. I'm glad I found you. I've been calling everywhere. Well, wh what is it, Gina? What's the matter? I'm being kicked out of the treatment center. Gina, what did you do? I got well, Mason. I'm being released. Today, right now. I'm cured. I can walk out of here and go home. Well, uh, c congratulations. That's wonderful. The doctor said uh, he never had a patient that worked as hard as I did. Uh, Gina, listen, I'm sorry, but I can't really talk right now. I'm in the middle of something here. Oh, um, well, you see, you're the only person I called. I, I wanted you to be the first to know. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad you called. I'm very proud of you. you uh, do you want me to come and uh, pick you up, take you home? Oh, uh, yes, if you have the time. Oh, of course I do. A few minutes. All right, I'll, I'll be here when, when you come. Good, and uh, it won't be long. Mason, I think it would be a good idea if you were to leave now. And if I were you, I would find Ted and persuade him to turn himself in. Sister Mary, quite contrary. If you were me, you wouldn't be quite so self-righteous about ruining another human being's life. Oh, the way your brother tried to ruin my sister's... You might have developed a, a sense of compassion during a lifetime of being buffeted about. A modicum of humility. Fine, when he admits what he did. Mary, don't you have any qualms at all about your desire for vengeance? Do you have any second thoughts that possibly, just possibly, you might be sending an innocent man to jail? I'm not sending anyone to jail. The jury will do that. And what about the call to your brother to hunt Ted down and have Look, him locked up? Ted was warned to stay away from Christy when he was released on bail. As misguided as he is, he's only trying to find out why he's been accused of a crime he didn't commit. People like you and your brother disgust me. You know, Mary... One day, you're going to come to Ted and beg his forgiveness for dragging him through all this. No. The only person whose forgiveness I will ask is my sister's. 
for not protecting her somehow from that monster. He is the most hateful, despicable human being I've ever known. I hate him, and I hope he rots in jail for the rest of his life. You know, I think you missed your calling, Sister of Mercy. You don't belong in a convent. You belong in a lynch mob. Now, darling, I have the number. Now, what is the doctor's name? Morrison. I don't want him to come to the house. Cece, why not? I don't want anyone to know I'm ill. Oh, Cece, no. Please, Sophia, listen to me. Do as I say. All right. Uh, yes, uh, hello, this is an emergency. This is Sophia Capwell. I need to talk to Dr. Morrison immediately. Thank you. The pill, was the pill I gave you doing you any good? You feel bad? I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh. Tell him that we'll come there. All right, uh, yes, Dr. Morrison. Uh, Cece has collapsed. Yes, he's in terrible pain. I gave him the medication. All right, all right, fine. We'll be there as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Now, how are you feeling? Better, I, I think the... I think the pill, you, the pill helped. I'm sorry, Sophia. Sorry? What are you sorry oh, for? for panicking and frightening you with all that talk about dying. Oh, no. Now, you listen to me. You don't have to be infallible with me. Do you understand that? When someone is sick, they are frightened. See, see, remember the vows. In sickness and in health. Did you mean it when you said you loved me? <laughs> oh, yes. Did you? Let's go to the doctor. That doctor is such a nice man, but I hope I never have to deal with him again. I want to forget all about this time in my life. Did you find Ted? No, no. I'm afraid he's digging an even deeper hole for himself than the one he's already in. Oh, the poor thing. Yeah, well, I don't want to rain on your parade. Don't worry about me. I'm prepared for this. I'm expecting a lot of stormy weather the moment I step back into that house. You'll be fine. You're a survivor if ever there was one. You bet I am. And I want to stop off and buy a present for Brandon on the way home. Yeah, sure. Mason, I want you to tell me what's really been going on back there while I've been away. Now, I'm sure they've been filling Brandon's head with bad things about me and that Santana's doing everything she can to displace me. Well, I've been trying to protect Brandon as best I could. Oh, I know you have. You've been my only ally. But you can't be an absentee mother and wife for too long without losing some ground. Which reminds me. Has Sophia moved up from the guest cottage to the main house yet? No, not yet, but she's spending a lot of time there. I just bet she is. But I'm going to put a stop to that as soon as I get home. I don't think anything's going on between her and Dad yet. Maybe not. I'll find out for myself. I'll be able to tell when I see them together. But... Anyway, it doesn't matter because I'm going to get Sophia and Santana out of that house. All right, but if I were you, Gina, I'd, uh, I'd go slowly. Mason, I've been too slow. I've been too easy. And, and too weak. Cece's taken advantage of that. I'm not going to let him do it anymore. His ex-wife, his ex-lover would just have to go. Well, I admire your bravado, Gina, but if I were you, I'd keep it under wraps. Look where my bravado got me. I've been uh, tossed out, excommunicated, reviled, and impoverished. And you're telling me that if you had to do it all over again, you'd go crawling back on your hands and knees? No. In the words of the immortal Popeye, I am what I am. It's too late for me, but lest you meet the same ghastly fate, I'd try to butter up to your better half. If you cross him, he could divorce you, bring up your past history, declare you an unfit mother, and take away Brandon and his newest heir, or heiress, as the case may be. Mason, I appreciate the warning, but I've had an awfully long time to think about this. And I have to do it my way. All right. May the best woman win. I will. Now, let's get out of here.
just stopped at a roadside stand and picked up some of the freshest fruit I have ever seen. This fruit is so fresh that when I squeeze it, it said, keep your hands to yourself. It was a joke, Kelly, not a big joke, just a small joke. Look at this. Look at this peach. Isn't this the most delicious peach you've ever seen? Wouldn't you love to take a big bite out of it? Kelly. What's up? What? Oh, I'm sorry. The, the fruit. The fruit looks great. Yeah, yeah and I also you. picked up something else while I was out. What? Two more job interviews. You're kidding! Mm -hmm. What are they for? Magazine and newspaper, and I have to leave right now if I'm going to get to them. Oh, did you just come back here to give me the fruit? Uh-huh. Of course. Well, that was very sweet. Mm-hmm. Well, you're pretty sweet yourself. How are you feeling? N numb. I think I feel numb. Cece, it isn't fair. I know. I know. I'm just grateful that we found out in time how we feel about each other. Look at you. Look at you. You're comforting me, and it should be the other way around. We'll just comfort each other. Oh, Sophia, I wish I, I knew how much time I had left. They say we're supposed to live each day as if it were our last. <laughs> I guess I have no choice now but to do that. I've got to cram a whole lifetime into weeks, months. If I'm lucky... Damn it, Sophia, there's not enough time. There's so much to do. There's so much unfinished business. No one, no one ever has enough time in their lives. But don't you forget that we're all with you to support you, to love you. Sophia, I don't want the children to know. Oh, Cece, now that's not no. fair. I don't want them to have to live with this hanging over their heads. And I, I don't want them to look at me differently or, or treat me like an invalid. Please, Sophia, promise me that, that you won't tell them or anyone else. Of course I promise you, but I hope you'll change your mind. I've got so many things to say to them. So many things to pass on to them. I just... I want to make the transition as smooth as I can, and I want my wishes clear, and I want them carried out. You know, I'm negotiating right now to take over the Walton Hotel chain. If I can push that deal through, we'll be the biggest organization in the country. Now, that's what I want to leave my children. And Brandon. If I can only just do it all now. Cece, you have done so much, so many incredible things in your life if you never did anything else. Sophia, I have got to finish what I've started. Yes, yes. Oh, God. I so much wanted to be here and watch Brandon grow up. Where are you? Santana! What do I have to do to keep you away from Brandon? Cece, Mama was here by herself and she had to be in the kitchen. Brandon and I would... We were only playing hide and seek, Daddy. I know, son. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm back home, Cece. I see everyone's here. Mommy, mommy! Hello, sweetheart. I'm so glad to see you again. Lincoln, I know you. You are so soft-hearted. You probably go back to Ted just because he has a problem. Mother, I love Ted. Oh, please. You acted like you hated him. You were dating other boys. I hated him the same way you hated Dad. You cannot compare a long marriage to a teenage infatuation. You met Dad when you were a teenager. Lakin, Ted has been accused of a horrible crime. Being accused is not the same as being guilty. Ted is not guilty. Darling, I admire you for your loyalty, but if you stick with him out of stubbornness, you are going to find yourself in a nightmare of ugly publicity, and our whole family is going to be dragged through the mud. You stuck by Dad when he was arrested and thrown in jail. Stop throwing my actions up to me. It's infuriating. I was uh, napping, <laughs> and I dreamed that uh, there were two hens pecking at each other, screeching all the time. I see that it wasn't a dream. Minx, you are head of this house. Would you please tell this young lady how dreadful it will be for her if she persists on staying with someone who's accused of rape? Augusta, give me a pencil so that I can give your exact words. In your own words, of course. Well, thank you. Young lady, if you love the boy and believe he's innocent, 
stand by him. Minx, I can't believe you. Hello. Thank you. You have good instincts, kitten. I believe in them. Minx, it's for you. Long distance. Hello? This is Mrs. T. McDonald Lockridge speaking. T as in tiger. <laughs> and this is Mr. Barnaby Wallace calling from New Zealand. <laughs> Brick! Brick! Where are you? How are you? Are you all right? Is Amy all right? Have you found the baby? Brick, where is he? Have you found Amy's baby? <laughs> oh. Yes to all your questions. Amy's holding him right now and he's beautiful. Wait till you see him. Oh, I can't wait. Now, who on earth was responsible for the kidnapping of the baby and why? Who would want to kidnap Amy's baby? Oh, Augusta, will you be quiet? I can't hear him. What, what, go, go on, Brick. Yeah, that's okay. It's a long story, Mrs. Lockridge. I'll have to explain it to you all when we get home. But for now, I'll just tell you that uh, Jack Stanfield Lee, who set up lobsters in Santa Barbara a few months ago, was a phony. A real Jack Lee is being held prisoner. Jack Lee was an imposter? What is this about Jack Lee being an imposter? Let me talk to him. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm turning over, turning you over to temporarily to my daughter-in-law, who, who sometimes has... Little patience and no manners. Manners of a teenager. Brick, this is Augusta. What is that about Jack Lee being an imposter? That's the truth. The guy Amy's been working for is a cousin of the real Lee. His name is uh, Jerry Cooper, and he had a lot of plastic surgery done to pull off the sc scam. Stakes were that high, Augusta. Where are you? If you've been drinking... <sighs> You'll be reading about it in the newspapers. Could you please put Minx back on, please? Thank you. <laughs> Brick... When are you coming home? Very soon. I miss you too, you know. Oh, listen, I want you to hear my baby. <laughs> oh, baby, baby, baby. Oh, what an enchanting sound. And Amy would like you to be his godmother, if that's okay with you. Oh, it's, it's more than okay. It's, it's an honor. Do you need anything, Brick? Have you, have you got enough money? No thanks for being well looked after here. Well, don't get too comfortable. Hurry home, the three of you. We will. So long for now. See you soon, huh? <laughs> Goodbye, Brie. Love. <laughs> oh. I'm so happy for Amy that she got her baby back. So are we all. I just don't understand why your grandmother's in tears over her chauffeur's girlfriend's baby. Augusta, you have the sensitivity of a street urchin. <laughs> I'm so happy. Minx, I'll never understand you. She has become very attached to Brick and Amy. That's it. No, no, there's something else to that, I'm sure. Someday I'm going to ransack her bedroom when she's out to find out what's really going on with Brick. Don't you dare do that, Mom. Oh, now I'm getting it from both sides. I will not have my daughter and my mother-in-law ganging up on me. And by the way, the subject of Ted Capwell is not finished yet. Someday you're going to come to Ted and beg his forgiveness. You and your brother disgust me. Disgust me. A crime he didn't commit. Didn't He's the most commit. hateful, despicable human being I've ever known. No. I hate him. Hate him. Hate him. You don't belong in a convent. You belong in a lynch. Mom. Lynch. Mom. A lynch. Mom. lynch mom. Mary? Lynch. Mom. Lynch. Mom. lynch. What's wrong? I don't know. I don't understand. What? What's the matter? Oh, Christy, I'm so scared of my own feelings, of my anger. I, I've never felt anything like this before. You know, I look at Ted. I want to attack him with my own hands. I want him dead. Well, you can relax, ladies. It's only me. Oh, he knows who I am, don't you? Of course he does. <laughs> Some black vulture kept saying she was your mother and... Amy Perkins came along, who would you believe? Oh. Kid's no fool, look at his grip. We hear that, Johnny. Brick thinks you're pretty smart, but I think you're brilliant, beautiful, and the most incredible baby on earth. And your mother doesn't say that to just every baby. No. Mm. Oh, what was that? <laughs> My friends, 
I'm delighted to inform you that the imposter cousin Jack Lee is languishing in a cell, awaiting extradition to the United States. I've just completed the arrangements. Well, that's good news. Well, what, about Ju what about Julia? Oh, Miss Wainwright is fine. Unfortunately, Jack, the real Jack, was injured in the uh, sword fight. But he's now being attended to, and it looks as though he'll be as fine as you seem to be, despite the arrow wound. Yes. Have you called the Prime Minister yet? No, not yet, but we will do. Uh, my grandson seems to be thriving now that uh, he's reunited with his mother. We're both thriving. I felt as if I were walking around missing the most important part of myself. Now I'm whole again. Uh, we're gonna make plans now to go home. Show off this little guy. A lot of people are anxious to see him. Well, before you all rush away and leave us, there's something I would like to say. Yeah, what is that, sir? Amy, um, I implore you to keep an open mind while I say something. Will you promise me to do that? I'll try. I want you to stay here for the sake of the child in New Stalend. It's an important opportunity for him to take an important place in the world, to help shape the history of his time. I don't believe they haven't found him yet. I'm afraid it's just a matter of time. Why don't you two go home and wait? Because Steve told us to wait here until he calls, and that's what we're going to do. Well, suit yourself. I've already phoned every place I thought he might be. Yeah, well, you can't convince me that you want to find of him. Of course I want to find him. He's only hurting himself by running away. I'm sorry. Didn't realize how much this is affecting me. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry about what I said before about... The lynch mob, I realize that you believe that Ted is guilty based on the evidence. That's not an unreasonable assumption. But I have to try to convey to you why I can't believe for a second that Ted is guilty of what he's been accused of. You see, Ted was the youngest in the family and I was the oldest, so I always sort of looked after him, you know. It wasn't until recently that I realized that he'd been looking after me, too. All of us, really. He worried about us. He intervened in our disputes, loved us, never asked anything in return except that we try to love each other. And then when, when he fell in love with a girl with Lakin, he was as committed to her as he had been to all of us. My brother is an extraordinary human being. He's the most gentle, the most loyal, the kindest human being I have ever known. I've never respected and admired anyone as much as I do him. Now I tell you this so that maybe you'll understand my overreaction to your hostility toward him. I apologize for that, but not for my belief in my brother's innocence. Ted Mason called just before wondering where you were. Yeah. He wants me to give myself up. What are you talking about? The bail's been like, set, like, I talked to Christy alone, and her sister came in. She, she saw us together. She wants to turn me in. Oh, no, like, I just wanted to talk to her and find out why she's lying about me. See, she comes on tough a lot of times, and I, and I think she feels, she feels hatred sometimes about me. But I never thought she'd go this far, Lakin. I mean, I thought she was a good person underneath. So did I. I, I guess we're both wrong. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I can't stand this. this. This whole thing is out of control. The only thing I had in mind, Lakin, when I was running from that house, is that if they're going to put me away, I'm not going to be with you anymore. I don't think I can handle that, Lakin. Why won't she tell the truth, Ted? Why won't she no, tell Lincoln, the listen, truth? Listen to me, Lakin. We may be separated very soon for a long time. All right? So I'd like to just Forget about Christy and, and all this whole mess. For a few hours, just pretend that it, 
that it doesn't exist. I want to spend this time alone with you, Lakin. I want to be with you very close tonight. What would that do? Answer her, answer her. I have just had a visit from the police. They want to know if Ted is here. Well, you can see for yourself he's not. Well, he could have climbed the trellis when you're out of the room. I know his Tarzan routine. He's crushed enough of my vines. Uh, am I never to have any peace in my house? I'm sorry, Grandma. <laughs> Keep your toes down. What? I mean, I mean, I'm voices. Keep your voices down. I was simply suggesting we search the room to see if Ted was here. That is ridiculous and very insulting to Lakin. I don't see why. I have to put my, my, my foot, I have to put my foot down and say, no, you may not search this room. All right, have it your way. You usually do. Oh, 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 oh. I Grandma. nearly blew that one, didn't I? Grandma, thank you, thank you, thank you. For what? For giving us a chance to be together. One last time before I go to jail. Ted, if I couldn't look into your eyes and see for myself that you're innocent, I'd know by the love and trust that I see shining in Lakin's eyes. No one has the right to rob you of this present time together. All we have is the here and the now. We have to treasure it and love it. We have to love the moment that it gives us of beauty and peace and trust. You know, there isn't enough love in the world. Be happy, darling. Kitten, kitten, kitten. Oh, po, 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 po. to think that I would kiss a cap, Will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we, we can't win them all, can we? <laughs> Be happy, darlings. <laughs> I just heard the car radio when I was driving over here. What? They caught the guy who was posing as Jack Lee. You're kidding! No! That's great! You know, that's right, because I'll never forget him telling me I was going to get rid of his cousin and, and take over the entire country well, and all that. Well, the bum didn't do either. Jack Lee is alive and well. Right on! I'm so glad. Thank God nothing happened to him. You and me, pal. We got that ball rolling, oh, you know you that? Oh, sure did. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Hey, how did your uh, interviews go? Pretty good. I've got a uh, pretty firm offer from the National Magazine, and the others are very interested. All right. Hey, this is coming along. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know, I just... Funny thing, I, it feels like it's drawing itself. I'm not sure, I mean, it looks like a town somewhere. I'm not sure, I don't know. Who's the man? I don't know. I just, he kind of belonged in the picture, you know? Anyway, I'm gonna get going then. Wait. First, you have to clink a glass of champagne with me to celebrate. It's not every day that an imposter is caught and Nick Hartley gets three job interviews. Well, sounds pretty good to me. Who's got the champagne? I do. It's in the fridge. I'll uncork it and pour us some. Okay.
favor to ask of you, or maybe I should say beg of you. I am very frightened now that Gina is back. Oh, Sophia, she hates me and she can't stand my being near Brandon. Well, what, what can I do for you? Put in a good word for me with her and, and with Cece. Sophia, I just don't have anybody else to stand up for me. Oh, my dear, I'm sorry, but I don't think a good word is enough. Oh, I've been looking for you two. You saved me the trouble. I'm sorry, Gina, I don't have time to talk. That's right all right, I'll do the talking. I've come home to my husband and my son, and we're going to be a family again. I have a pretty clear idea about what's been going on here, and I intend to put a stop to it right now. I want you to separate yourselves from this household, from CC, and especially from Brandon. I intend to be the only woman in CC's life from now on. I know I have a lot of work undoing the damage you've done, but I will undo it, and I will get my son back completely. Someday I may consider letting you back into his life. Gina, you can't make a decision like that by yourself. I can and I have, Santana. Don't you push me on this, or I'll see to it that you're out of his life completely. Now, Sophia, you're older and wiser. Maybe you can explain to Santana the precarious position she'll be in if she goes against me. I think she understands the odds. Well, good then. I have to go to the store to pick up some things. I promise Brandon I'll make his favorite dinner tonight. Can I drop you off somewhere? No. I'm going to talk to Mama before I leave. All right. I expect... The two of you to be gone by the time I get back here. I promised Cece that I wouldn't make a scene. I want to keep that promise. Think of a time when I didn't love you, Lakin. I didn't want you. I feel the same way. You know, when I was angry with you, I never stopped loving you. You know, I wanted to give you the world. I always seemed to give you a lot of grief instead. Like right now. You have given me some of the best some of the worst times of my life. I guess that's what being in love is. So what are you going to do after tonight? What do you want me to do? Turn yourself in, I guess. But I'll stand by you. I'll do everything I can. No, you will. I know that's what I gotta do. Hey, come on, look, at least this way I'll have a fighting chance, huh? I mean, if I run away, then... I'll lose you forever. Look, this is tomorrow night, all right? But tonight... It's all ours. I start calling you your highness never I feel badly that the king's plans for his grandson will never come true but this little prince is going back to Santa Barbara just as soon as we can get out of here I'm really glad to hear that now with the king painting such an idyllic mm -hmm. picture that maybe it might be tempted can you imagine me queen mum with my entourage <laughs> <laughs> touch me my fan and have the banquet table set for 200 my nobles are stopping by for lunch mm. what the cook quit off with his head and off with your head too I'd be a tough queen. <laughs> and you can be my, um... Joker? No, no, no my no, knight. knight. I dub the oh. Sir Brick. Easy queenie. <laughs> Crowning hurts. Mm -hmm. But he's not really my baby. Just my baby, is he? He's, he's prince of the realm. He's next in line to the throne of this country. Didn't really seem real before, did it? No, it didn't. And it isn't now. Mm, not really. No one can ever leave gently. There's no harder word than goodbye. Just making sure we're not going to be interrupted. I wish I could say 
What makes no stay? I love you. Wish I could tell you a lie. I love you. Nothing's gonna stop us now. <laughs> yeah. This is our time. We may be so far apart. The more of a song than all I could write. Just hold me forever tonight. Just hold me forever tonight. Gina may be a lot stronger now, but she is still thinking more about herself than she is about Brandon. That might be true, but I feel sorry for her. Sorry for Gina? Why? Yes, indeed, Sophia. Why? Gina's going to be a much more formidable opponent now than she was in the old days. Hello, Mason. I feel sorry for her because she thinks that she's in control, and when she finds out that she's not in complete control, it's going to be very hard on her. Excuse me, I have to return this bathing suit. I'll go with you, Sophia. I'll say goodnight. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I know how upset you are about this, and I know that Gina's being very unreasonable, but don't you think it'd be better to let a little time pass? I have to say goodbye to my son. I think you're causing trouble for yourself, Santana. Well, Santana always treads where angels fear to go. Oh, I say I forgot my car key. Where the hell do you think you two are going? No, don't bother lying. You're going to see Brandon, and you're on your way up to Cece's bedroom. Gina, don't be silly. Brandon will not understand if I just disappear on him. I'll make sure he's all right. Now, both of you, get out of here. I just want to return. I don't care what you want. Get out. You are not going to stop me from saying goodnight to my son. Now, wait a minute, Santana. Santana, I am going to stop you. My God, Gina. Santa Barbara returns at the same time tomorrow afternoon here on Sky One. After the break, Christopher Biggins is about to start his daily search for that wife of the week. Don't go away.